Is this a filament dryer or a rotisserie? Well, maybe it's a bit of both. Keep watching and we'll find out. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. Hello 3D printing friends and welcome back. Today on the BV3D channel, we'll get a look at this. iBoss calls it the polyphemus, but I call it the filament rotisserie. Okay, mostly I also call it the polyphemus. I'd like to thank my friends over at iBoss for sending this over free of charge so I could show it to you. Now I've only spent a couple of weeks with it, so this is maybe less of an in-depth review and more of a first impression video. But I'm still going to do what I usually do, which is show you the product and let you know what I like, what I don't like, and what could maybe use some improvement. Before we get into the polyphemus though, uh, let's talk about filament drying in general. Like, do you even need to do it? Well, all, or mostly all, 3D printing filament is hygroscopic. And hygroscopic means that a material likes to absorb moisture from the air. So if you tend to leave your filament sitting out exposed to the air and the air has a lot of moisture in it, your filament is going to invite some of that moisture in. And the longer it sits out, the more moisture it'll absorb. And the more moisture your filament has in it, the harder it can be to print with. Some materials are more prone to this than others. For instance, PETG and TPU are more hygroscopic than PLA. Now, one of the things that happens to moist filament is it can be stringy when it prints. Or you can sometimes actually hear little sizzling and popping sounds and see little puffs of steam coming out of the nozzle. Now, here where I live, the relative humidity in the house is routinely in the 50% or better range, so I really can't just leave filament sitting out for very long. When I'm not using it, I usually keep it in a gallon Ziploc bag along with a desiccant packet. I find that leaving filament out for a day or two while I'm printing with it is usually fine as long as I put it back in its bag when I'm done. And when it starts giving me trouble during prints, like stringing when it usually doesn't, or not having as good of a surface finish as it usually does, that's when I'll pop it in a filament dryer and run it through a drying cycle. I've been sent several filament dryers over the past few years. I have a Sunlu S1, a Sunlu S2, and an iBoss Ease Dry. Before those, though, I made a huge DIY filament dryer out of a 20-gallon plastic tub and a food dehydrator. It worked for a while, but the food dehydrator eventually gave out after about six months of being on 24-7. So the S1 was my first commercial purpose-made filament dryer. It has a heating element on the bottom and a clear hinged top. And it has a small screen and some buttons to let you start a drying cycle by selecting the kind of filament that you're putting into it. But with the S1 having heating element only on the bottom, the filament heats unevenly. To work around that, I'll periodically open the lid and spin the filament about half a revolution. The Sunlu S2 was my second one, and it improved on the S1 by having a larger screen and by having two heating elements, one on the top and one on the bottom, to heat the filament more evenly. So it can heat the spool all the way around at the same time. And while both the Sunlu units work pretty well in my testing, they don't have fans to circulate the air inside them, nor do they have a way to vent the warm, moist air from inside the chamber out. So then I got the iBoss Ease Dry. It uses a forced hot air system to dry the filament, pulling air in from the room, heating it up, and then blowing it through the drying chamber. And just like my DIY solution did, the hot air removes moisture from the filament, which then exits through a vent. Instead of using a screen to set the filament type and start a drying cycle, it has a material selector knob and a power switch. Turn the knob to the material type you want to dry and turn on the switch. But what it lacks is timing electronics to turn the unit off after a drying cycle. These have that. So you have to remember to set a timer and turn it off yourself. So that brings us to this one, and this is the iBoss Polyphemus. It combines the best aspects of all the filament dryers I just covered. It uses a forced hot air system, and its screen lets you start a drying cycle, and it will automatically turn off when it's finished. Here are some of its more unique features. First off, rotisserie mode. And this one fascinates me. The polyphemus will automatically spin your filament so it heats evenly all the way around. This is powered by a small geared motor that iBoss says has a lifespan of 1,500 hours. With a four-hour drying cycle on PLA, you could spin and dry two spools of filament a day, every day, for more than a year before the motor would give out. And that's over 700 spools of filament. And when the motor eventually does give out, guess what? They included a spare in the box. 
Second, humidity hold. And this one is pretty interesting too. You can set the polyphemus to keep the environment inside the drying chamber at a particular relative humidity level. Third, print while drying. Okay, that one's not unique. All of the filament dryers in this video can also act as a spool holder. So if you have a really hygroscopic filament, you can keep it dry while you're printing. The S2 has one filament path. The S1 has two. The Ease Dry has three. And the Polyphemus has four? No, it has eight. Two in the back, three in the front, and three on top. Why so many? Well, the front, top, and back ports give you the flexibility to feed filament out of the unit in whichever direction makes the most sense for how you have the Polyphemus positioned relative to your printer. The ones on the front, top, and back on the left half of the unit are for the left side spool, and the ones on the right half are for the right side spool, but what about the ones in the middle? Those are for three kilogram spools. And that's the third unique feature. You can dry an enormous spool of filament. iBoss has an expansion kit that raises the top another 45 millimeters, so huge spools like this will fit. The manual also says you can email their support team to request STL files so you can print your own. That's pretty cool that they'll give you the files for free instead of making you buy the kit. Oh, and before I forget, the Polyphemus has a couple of places inside where you can add your own desiccant packs to help keep filament dry after you've dried it. Let's move on to the operation of the unit. The screen and control buttons on the Polyphemus are pretty easy to use. Like a lot of electronics, some features are just a button press away, while others require like a three second long press to access. Now let's go over these real quick. A press on the power button turns the unit on. And a long press on the power button will reset the unit to factory settings. The option button enters material selection mode where you use the up and down buttons to choose the material you're drying. There are presets for all the usual suspects. And for each one, you can press the settings button to customize the temperature, heating level, and drying time. A long press on the settings button toggles between displaying temperatures in Celsius and Fahrenheit. There's also the rotate button, which turns rotisserie mode on or off for even cooking of your filament. Now back to the power button real quick, it has another feature hiding behind it. So when the unit is off, that first press of the power button turns it on. Pressing it again puts the unit in humidity hold mode and then a third press turns it off. That humidity hold mode is pretty cool. You can choose to keep the environment inside the unit between 10% and 70% relative humidity in 10% steps. So after I've dried some filament, if I want to keep it at 20% relative humidity, I can come back to the unit, turn it on, and then press power again to go to humidity mode, and then tap settings and pick 20%. Then, when the relative humidity inside the polyphemus gets above that level, the unit will run just enough to get it back down below 20% and it'll keep doing this until you turn the unit off. I find that in my house, where the ambient air is around 50% relative humidity, the unit comes on for a little bit two or three times an hour. And even though you can set it to as high as 70% relative humidity, it won't add humidity if your ambient relative humidity is below that level. It simply won't come on to reduce it. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, a subscribe would really make my day. That lets me know that I'm making content that you enjoy and you want to see more like it. Thanks! Okay, so we've covered the features, but does it actually work? In short, yes. I did the sort of test I've done in the past where I weighed a spool of TPU and then ran a drying cycle on it and weighed it again. Now, I haven't used a lot of the filament from this spool, but it has sat out for a while in between uses. So here are the results. The weigh-in before drying was one kilogram, 21 grams. After a single four hour drying cycle, I weighed it again and it was one kilogram, 20 grams. So it lost a gram of weight, which is presumably due to water being removed from the filament. After a second four hour drying cycle, it weighed one kilogram, 19 grams. So it lost another gram of water weight. I did one more four hour cycle to see if it would lose any more weight, but it stayed at one kilogram, 19 grams. So after two drying cycles, the TPU had lost as much water weight as it was going to. And that was two grams. Now I've used this visual before and I think it illustrates the result pretty well. A gram of water is equal to a cubic centimeter of water. 
So I printed a pair of one centimeter cubes. If you imagine that these two one centimeter cubes are water, that's how much came out of the filament. So with all that said, what's the good and the bad? Well, here's the good. It has an easy to use interface, a nice looking enclosure, and it can dry two one kilogram spools at a time or with an expansion part, one three kilogram spool. It has a humidity hold mode to keep dried filament in a controlled environment before you transfer it to a bag with desiccant. And it has a rotisserie feature to spin your filament while it dries for even heating. And it even comes with a spare motor. And last but not least, it does the thing it's supposed to, removing moisture from filament. Now, just so you don't think this is a 100% glowing endorsement, I do want to point out a couple of things that might not be immediately obvious. In other words, here's the bad. If you have these smaller 250 gram spools, these won't work in the polyphemus. They're just not big enough to reach between the rollers. So you won't be able to take advantage of the spin the filament feature, and you won't be able to print while you're drying it. I dried this one by laying it sideways inside the unit and nothing bad seemed to happen, but that's probably not an ideal way to dry small spools, and I wouldn't really recommend doing that. The other thing that I noticed about the polyphemus is that the black label that surrounds the screen and the buttons has a few bubbles in it where it touches the screen. It's not something you really notice when the unit's on, but it does show up when it's off. Also, be aware that you won't be able to use the spinning feature or the print while drying feature on spools that have damaged rims. And lastly, sometimes a spool doesn't want to spin even with good rims. The powered rollers in the polyphemus are relatively smooth and they don't have a grippy coating. I had one spool that would spin for a while and then stop, but then after a while it started working, so maybe it's just that the powered rollers need to be broken in for a little while. Now what about improvements? Well, if there's anything I'd like to see improved about the polyphemus, it would be to have a grippy coating on the powered rollers, or maybe just a grooved or ridged texture on them so that spools wouldn't occasionally slip. Something I'd love to see on the polyphemus would be having it drop into humidity hold mode immediately after drying instead of turning off completely. Now while I understand that it's probably a good thing to have the unit turn off when it's finished, I'd like the option to have it enter humidity mode even if that's not the default behavior. So that's the iBoss polyphemus filament rotisserie system. I mean filament dryer. It's got some unique features like being able to hold two regular one kilogram spools or one huge three kilogram spool. It can take your filament for a spin, and it can maintain it at a particular relative humidity level. Thanks again to iBoss for sending this over to me so I can show it to you. They're taking pre-orders for the Polyphemus, and no, it's not a Kickstarter. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. Big thanks to everyone who supports the channel, whether with channel memberships or by using the links in the description. If you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up and maybe a subscribe so you don't miss future ones. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this one. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool with dry filament.